Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for the patch 12.16 rundown. Today we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with an updated tier list for all 5 roles. Winning starts with drafting the right champions and this video will give you an immediate advantage over other players in solo queue. Make sure you subscribe because we make meta videos just like this one to ensure they are always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everybody can agree that Riot does well, the skins. This patch, we're seeing some new additions to the Seal Valkyrie skin line. The skins that we're getting are Strike Commander Camille, Strike Paladin Lucian, Cyber Halo Janna, which also comes with the Prestige version, and Armored Titan Nasus, which makes me think about Attack on Titan. Anyway, in addition to these brand new skins, the Udyr VGU will be launching with this patch, so all the skins are being updated as well. Now that we've covered the skins, let's talk about the upcoming system changes. Well, for this patch, it's actually just a single change. Even Shroud is being buffed, with the damage and percent going from 9% to 10%, and the duration being buffed from 4 seconds to 5 seconds. This is kind of an iffy change for me. I get where Riot's coming from. Enchanters and Mages have largely dominated the support role for a very long time now. Aside from some relatively off-meta picks like Amumu and Zac, the class, tanky, engaged champions are pretty much all troll picks. And that even includes Leona. As popular as she is, she's had a negative win rate for the vast majority of the past year, and only recently just got above 50%. So, what makes this even Shroud buff a bad idea? Isn't buffing an item that enchanters and mages don't use a way to shift the meta? Well, the thing is, when you really do dig into the specifics of the champion win rates and factor in the items built, even Shroud is already OP. If you compare our support's win rate with Even Shroud and their win rate when they go for Solari, the difference is pretty surprising. Seriously, go check any stat websites that show you these types of details. Alisar, Amumu, Rel, Leona, and pretty much any of the other champions in this class have their win rates go up about 4%, and pretty much every other champion in this class have their win rates go up as much as 4% when you build Even Shroud. This buff isn't going to fix the core issues of enchanters and mages being super safe and reliable picks that get very consistent results. It's going to make good matchups even better for snowballing kill lanes, while the bad ones will remain bad. This just leads to way too heavy feast or famine gameplay that, in my opinion, isn't too healthy. When you lose to it, it feels hopeless to stop them from rolling you, and when you lose as it, it feels impossible to ever become useful from behind. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's take a look at our updated tier list. Alright, before we talk about our updated tier list, I want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this one are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players that spent years climbing the ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. So, if cramming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions to instantly get better if the game sounds good to you, you should really go ahead and pay them a visit. And they're available 24-7, so feel free to head over at any time. Now, let's actually get into the tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. The first move we have is taking Lilia back up to the OP tier. Even though she was hit with a small nerf a while back, the meta is just too good right now for Lilia in the top lane. The vast majority of strong picks are tanks, juggernauts, or bruisers that rely on longer fights rather than bursty quick trading ones. This is exactly the type of matchup that you want with Lilia. An opponent that you can kite around and beat in the War of Attrition with her passive is basically a free win. We're moving Malphite up to the S tier, but this is a pretty tentative change. Malphite is a super solid pick when you want to fill the gap on the team. He provides one of the best engaged ultimates in the game and works super well to neutralize most AD threats in the top lane. But he doesn't do super well against tanks and juggernauts. He still has a great team fighting ultimate even if he loses lane, but outside of that, he just gets ran over in the side lane. Hopefully the buff that he'll be getting makes him less of an easy target for those guys in lane. Dr. Muda has been doing really well again, to the point where we're also moving him up to the S tier. There isn't really a lot to say about this. He's just giving the smackdown most games, and once you get a lead on Mundo, he carries surprisingly hard for such a tanky champion. As a bit of advice, you may find it helps a lot to run Ghost on him. It's not like he has some big flash combo to pull off. Ghost gives a lot of sticking power, allowing you to run down backline carries in fights. With Udyr's VGU going live this patch, we're going to go ahead and add him to the tier list as a top laner. It's kind of hard to say where exactly he's going to land, but at the moment, his numbers are looking really high, and we may think that he ends up being good enough to be along in the S tier. This is obviously very tentative, and he could realistically end up somewhere from OP down to the D tier, depending on how you look at things once the patch is actually out. Be sure to keep an eye out for our mid-patch update next week if anything changes. With Irela getting some resist buffs this patch, we'll be moving her up to the B tier. You'll still want to be very selective when you lock her in. If you blind pick her and your opponent is halfway decent, you'll probably get destroyed. But if you know your lane matchup is good and the enemy team doesn't have anything that will make your team fighting miserable, she's definitely a pretty solid option. Jace is getting a pretty big buff this patch, and in upper elos, he's probably going to become a pretty good champion. But as we talked about pretty often, he's not really a champion that does really well outside of the 1%. 
we'll go ahead and move him up to the C tier, since he isn't quite as bad as he was. But remember, the C tier basically means that even in his very best matchups, there's probably always at least one or two other champions that could win easier and use that lead much better than Jace could. Warwick moves up to the OP tier here. He's one of the best examples of simple being best. So many players have massive egos that determine their champion pool. I mean, Lee is still the fourth and coming popular pick in the jungle, despite his massively negative win rate. If more people would just swallow their eco and lock something simple yet effective like Warwick, then maybe they'd actually climb. Warwick may not have a crazy overloaded kit, but as far as his actual numbers go, he's really overtuned. He's arguably the best 1v1 champion in the game, with an insane sustain that makes it pretty much impossible for anybody really to go toe to toe with him, especially in the early levels. Trundle also moves up to the OP tier. He's another super strong duelist that many foes have to stare clear of, so you don't have to worry about needing any early game handholding. While his 1v1 skills aren't quite as insane as Warwick's, he brings a ton of utility to the table. His pillar may not seem that crazy, but a well-timed pillar in the right place can be huge, from canceling jumps to pinning enemies against other terrain. His ultimate is also incredibly broken, since it not only makes it easier to kill enemy frontliners, but also makes Trundle a lot tankier while healing him for a ton. Like in the top lane, we aren't too sure where Udyr will actually end up, but with those crazy high numbers, we're putting him up in the S tier for now. This is just our best guess, so check back next week and see what we think then. Ravis's buff definitely helped to make him stronger this patch, but he's not quite as OP as we thought he'd be, so we're moving him down to the S tier. He's still really good, but the champions in the OP tier are the true 1v9 warriors in the jungle. Along with his performance as a top laner, Mundo as a jungler has really been picking up steam lately, so we're adding him back to the tier list as an S tier pick for now. With last patch's mid-patch update, Gragas was doing super well, so we promoted him all the way up to the S tier, but it seems that we just based things off too small of a sample size. He very quickly fell back down in win rate, so we're demoting him to the B tier. Only pick him for specific synergistic combos or to counter certain enemies. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Diana was already in our OP tier, but I just want to point out how much stronger she'll be in this patch. The adjustments that she's getting are a nerf to the Sunfire build that some Dianas go in the jungle, but when you're building her actually pair AP, her damage will be a lot higher. Since that's already her best build in the mid lane, we think that she may end up being the best overall pick in this world this patch. Kennen is doing better as predicted after his buffs last patch, but we overshot this placement, so we're moving him down to the S tier. The changes Zoe will be getting this patch are pretty nice, but the sentiment here is the same that I had for Jace in the top lane. She's a champion that does way better in high elo, due to you needing some good micro and understanding of the game on a deeper level to pull her off. Also reliance on your team. Anyway, let's move things down to the bot lane. Seraphine is being moved back up to the OP tier. She fell off super hard in other roles after her recent nerfs, but as a bot lane carry, she's still absolutely A-OK. -okay. She can bully most laners, and easily neutralize the ones that she can't have with her wave clear. She scales super well, bringing both good damage and utility depending on the builds, and she still is super easy to abuse elo inflator. Caitlyn lands in the A tier this patch. She's been doing a bit better lately, but early leads aren't transitioning as much as they should in the late game. The buffs that she's getting should help her quite a bit in this regard. Kaisa getting a pretty nice buff across the board, so we're moving her up to the A tier. This may actually be a bit of an underestimation, so she's definitely a pick that we'll be keeping an eye on. She could very well end up in the S or even OP tier pick, depending on how different builds play out on her. Things continue to get worse for Zeri. She's getting the Aphilios treatment big time. She has a negative win rate in solo queue, not just in low and mid elo, but also even at the very top of high elo. But she's still doing super well in pro play, so she's going to get nerfed because of that. To finish things off, we have our supports. Zyra is already plenty OP, and is getting buffed for some reason on this patch. So, um, uh, she'll be even better, I guess. I don't really know where this is coming from, but abuse her while you can. Do it for the vine. I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. Okay, moving on. Vilkos moves up to the OP tier. Like the other mages up here, he's just an insanely impressive laner. Able to help the ADC shove the wave while also pelting the enemy bot lane with constant poke. Post 6, he can also deal insanely high damage, with the full combo easily being enough to melt the enemy bot lane from full HP if they get caught out by it. This also makes him an extremely useful support for early dragon fights, where he has the means to wipe out the entire enemy team if they play into his laser. Maokai moves up to the S tier. As we talked about in our system changes portion of the video earlier, even Shroud is getting a pretty decent buff this patch, so any champion that builds it is going to be a lot stronger. Leona gets moved up to the S tier. Bringing her all the way up from the B tier may sound like a big jump, but as we mentioned earlier, her stats are pretty heavily weighed down by bad builds. When building the newly buffed Even Shroud, she's definitely going to be a pretty strong support, and honestly, may even need to be further moved up to the OP tier. Another champ that we'll see become a lot stronger is Rel. 
Out of all the champions in the class, she's probably the one that benefits the most from the Even Shroud over Solari. Rel is such a beefy gal, she doesn't need the extra tankiness from Solari. It's much better for her allies to be able to kill opponents with a ridiculous CC chain, and Even Shroud obviously makes that quite a bit easier. Alrighty, that concludes our 12.16 patch rundown. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching, good luck on your games, and as usual, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.